the terrain on that mountain is fairly gradual, sloping upwards. From a pilot's perspective, it doesn't look very big at all. DC-9 jet service for Atlanta, Birmingham, and New Orleans. Well, at the time, Dulles was a little used airport. Uh, Washington National was the main airport in the Washington, D.C. area. One of the reasons that they were going into Dulles, they had diverted from Washington National because of the strong winds. They were, they were given very little information, except that the, they said the flight was delayed. But this accident was a confluence of small errors, small miscalculations that led to a disaster. On the top of Mount Weather, yesterday's heavy rain turned to snow early this morning and began covering the wreckage of TWA Flight 514. Well, we received two calls, actually. One is a plane had been reported missing, and then, uh, which is standard procedure, they'd follow it up with a second call. And then the second call confirmed that a plane was, in fact, missing and presumed down someplace west of Leesburg. And uh, so I said, OK, well, I'll, I'll head that way. So it was limited access to get, to get up in there, which was good. So I kept the traffic down. So we were able to, uh, by using state police and various law enforcement agencies, control the traffic coming up in there. Actually, we didn't allow anybody up in there. It didn't belong in there. Please move on down to the grassy area so when these vehicles come out, we can get them out of the road. The weather forecast was light rain. It was raining cats and dogs. and. Uh, with uh, 20, 40 knots of wind, uh, various gusts and so forth. It was just driving through your clothes and everything. It was, um, it was a mess. This is one of the most um, complete, uh, completely destroyed aircraft wreckages that I encountered uh, in my 44 years with accident investigation. We had everybody just fan out in, in teams and start combing the area looking for uh, uh, survivors. They were, they were, they were of course, there were plenty of bodies, but there was no, we couldn't find any survivors. Well, there have been a 120 bodies brought to the morgue, not bodies, but bags of bodies. Uh, we don't know how many this represents, and we won't know until after the medical examiners have finished their, com or completed their examination. The Federal Aviation Administration called it a non-survivable type of accident. Because of violent weather, the big 727 TWA jet had been diverted from Washington National Airport to Dulles International in nearby Virginia. On its approach to Dulles, 
TWA Flight 514 from Indianapolis and Columbus and carrying more than 90 people slammed into the side of Mount Weather, a foothill of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Only a mile and a half away was a secret underground emergency White House installation. The plane's wings cut a swath through 20-inch wide trees like a giant lawnmower. Rescue worker Bill Smith was one of the first on the scene. And the total impact area probably runs seven to eight hundred yards in depth. Did it hit, Did it the, hit top, the mountain? The top of the, the top of the mountain, or the side coming in? It hit well below the top. It hit the trees well below the top. Below the how far below the top? I never quite understood how that could have happened. Um, but the, um, well, I saw the plane, the crash site once, and it was clear that the, uh, with another 50 or 60 feet, he, they, they would have made it through. You felt it was too soon. How, how could this, how could this be happening? And I, and I thought how close they were to the airport. They were almost home. Near Upperville, Virginia. Yeah. One more okay. time. One, One more. more. The deeper tragedy here on Mount Weather is that this is the first day of Advent, the beginning of the Christmas season. This is Bill Downs, ABC News, near Upperville, Virginia. The crash was such a mystery to everyone. The mountain jumped up and bit the plane. Was my only hope of any kind of explanation. No accident is the, or typically is the result of one single factor. That's why the, the board does such a meticulous job in its investigation. This should not be. This should not exist. We, there's a better way to run this railroad. not only disappointing, it's disgusting, and you know, you, you feel very badly for the people that are involved, and that's not just the, the victims, but the next of kin and all the surrounding people. Uh, my name is George Spies. 
I'm from Delaware, Ohio. Most people who know the, the story of my life would not consider me lucky because I've, I've lost uh, several children. Two children have died. Uh, my wife died and um, my ma mother died in a plane crash. My son, who was about 18, and his little brother, who was about 12, uh, went to the airport to pick them up. And uh, they waited, and they waited, and they waited, and eventually they were told that the plane had crashed and they had very little information to share. My name is Alice Kuntz, Alice Knox and Kuntz, and I'm from Martinsville, Indiana. My mom's name was Laura Knoxon. She went by Lolly. I kind of always felt like that was her nickname because she was so sweet and she was. She was a nurse, uh, always. Just that was her nature and that was her job and that's what she did. My dad's name was Robert Lowell Knoxon. He went by Lowell. We had a great family. It was, they were wonderful people. Um, always supportive and, and loving. Thursday we spent a wonderful Thanksgiving in my apartment making a big giant turkey in a little tiny apartment. <laughs> Had a lovely, lovely holiday. Then the morning of December 1st they were due to go back home. I probably had regret that I was grumbly and tired and wanted to get back to bed and quite likely didn't give him a hug and a kiss goodbye. My understanding is that um, Senator Luger and Senator Birch Bayh were in D.C. scheduled to get on that particular plane to come home for the winter break. And so the report was that um, there was a crash in Northern Virginia and there was no one of importance on the plane. And that's not what I needed to hear and not true. Um, I have struggled all these years to try to give them the benefit of the doubt that they were reporting their side of the story, but that was a devastating phrase. It was the same sentence every hour, that there was no one of importance on the plane. Whoa. Everybody is somebody's son. Everybody has got someone, somewhere that cares. Let's remember that. It was really, really hard because I, you know, I, you know, I was losing my mother. was demolished, there were 
know, bits and pieces all over the countryside. Uh, we got a little basket with stuff in it, her, her, her teeth and eyeglasses and stuff like that. Because that, there wasn't much to identify. That was an incredibly sad time in, in, in its own way. The, uh, my mom had been a music teacher and she was very talented and people would, uh, they were eager to sing with her. She could play on the piano anything you could hum. Sad. It's a long time since I've been glad, but I know what I'll do by and by. I'll eat some worms and then I'll die. And when I'm gone, you just wait and see. They'll all be sorry that they picked on me. like a, a rock in the pond that just ripples you know, to hundreds of people. Here was a man that we, that had done so well in the military and we knew would make a difference in the private sector. And his life was cut short. Tall, lean, um, held himself upright. There was something about his carriage that was um, you know, engaging and made people look and, and pay attention. Believe it or not, he had stopped at our home en route to the airport. And we had had a joke and wished him well and went to the front door and waved him off. And then that Sunday, his daughter, who he was visiting, called. I answered the phone and she was hysterical, in tears. She said, my parents were on that airplane that crashed out near Dulles Airport. We didn't see a lot of African American generals because there weren't any. And when Roscoe came around, he was it. He was our guy. able to break through the color barriers and be able to uh, establish a presence. Um, and so now you see uh, 40 years later, uh, our Army today, the United States Army today has three uh, four-star generals serving on active duty at the, at the same time. That's historic in any of the services, but including uh, certainly with the United States Army. <laughs> On behalf of the Rocks Incorporated and the Rocks, Washington, D.C. chapter of the Rocks, we welcome you to our 40th annual scholarship and award spring gala. I'm filled with this energy, this, this thirsting for knowledge to want to know more. Who am I? Who was he? What does my name really mean? And when people meet us and see us, they go, do you understand what your grandfather did for us? Do you understand, you know, the ways he paid for us? Do you understand? And it's humbling and it's an honor. I 
I wanted to go, felt like I needed to go to get some answers just because the crash was such a mystery to everyone. How could this happen? What went wrong? What, what could have caused this devastating accident? In total context, uh, the safety of the public probably was enhanced perhaps a uh, hundredfold. It, it's a very significant accident. Uh, Mr. Yotis uh, uh, should refrain from engaging in such generalities. The fact of whether or not uh, the aircraft would be on radar vectors or whether we, he was on his own navigation. And I think it's uh, highly improper to ask such a question under those circumstances. It's the fact that it doesn't say whether it's before or after uh, he was cleared for the approach. Excuse me, would you go up to the uh, beginning of the, it says uh, just above that, uh, it tells the controller, if I'm not mistaken, to issue all of the following to an aircraft before it reaches the approach gate. Now would you read A under what, it, what must be supplied? Perhaps a better term for it is a um, misunderstanding of the terminology that was being used. Uh, you say uh, radar arrival to a uh, pilot, it means one thing. You say radar arrival to a controller, it means something different. And this was one of the major recommendations that came out of the accident to develop a lexicon that actually defined these terms of reference. tremendously improved aviation safety just by virtue of the fact that the controllers and the pilots were now talking the same language and the uh, approach charts that the pilots refer to uh, prior to the final approach fix and after um, were the same. A few weeks earlier, ABC News has learned a large United Airlines jet barely missed the same hills after being given the same kind of confusing clearance. Even worse, United then went to FAA and was told something was being done about the problem, but nothing was. At the hearings today, the story of still another close call, 30 minutes before the TWA crash, was told. Captain Jan Minkler of American Airlines was flying his 727 toward Dulles Airport and was told to begin his approach, again without being told how low to go. But Minkler challenged the controller. I hesitated to descend because of the timing of the approach clearance and because of our distance out. In this case, we got handed off and cleared for an approach. We weren't psychologically prepared to receive that clearance that soon or that far from the airport. It happens once in a blue moon. It was obvious to one of my investigators that was on the team working the accident that this uh, low flight over that uh, weather mountain was not a unique experience, that it happened all the time. And uh, one wonders uh, why the uh, pilots of these airplanes haven't come forth, but uh, in, in view of the fact that, uh, that their uh, situation would be jeopardized, uh, it's not too difficult to understand, and I think this throws some light on why we were asking for immunity, and I thank you very much. It is not an indictment against the captain or the controller. This, was, this permeated the, the industry, uh, or you could say the whole uh, family of controllers and the whole family of pilots.
This is the kind of crash the FAA is aiming to prevent with the ground proximity warning device. 92 died when this TWA 727 smashed into a ridge during a storm approaching Dulles Airport. More than 1,200 people have been killed in half a dozen such crashes in the past several years, four of them in the last year alone. It wasn't long after this and ground proximity warning systems were mandated in airliners and that's a very important technology. I would put it up with a jet engine or weatherborne, airborne weather radar is one of the most important pieces of technology we have on an airplane to keep us, to keep us safe. I would like to think that the crew and the families of the victims of this accident know that it, I think about these things you know, just about every day. Anytime I'm in mountainous terrain or I, I read about safety reports, I, I know that they're with me when I'm flying today with myself, my crew, and my passengers.